Hi everyone. I finally finished Jessica Jung's book Shine and so I'm going to talk about it. This will be an overview of the plot, what I think of it in general, how I think it relates to her life and her story, and my final takeaways. First things first, the elephant in the room, this book is not directly about her life in girls' generation. The things that happened to the main character Rachel would not have happened to Jessica. It is not a coded memoir more like a story of what might happen to an idol in modern day written from the inside. Jessica likely draws inspiration for the character from her own experience in life, particularly the hardships or training and being an idol from America. I'm sure some of the things Rachel experiences are based on things Jessica has been through or maybe what she knows her friends or sister to have been through in the industry too. The only part that seems to allude to Jessica's departure is when Rachel speaks to Gina, the lead singer of the group Electric Flower who gets kicked out for dating another idol while their company DB tells the world she chose not to re-sign. She says DB soiled her reputation in the industry and made her sign secret contracts to hold her longer than seven years. If this is exactly what Sika went through is unclear but very possible. We'll get into that stuff in the plot review though. Beware. There are major spoilers ahead. The plot revolves around 16-year-old Rachel Kim trying to be an idol in 2019. She's a long-time trainee under DB Entertainment, the biggest company in K-pop. Rachel is a generic main character with a touch of Jessica. She is dorky, sweet, fashionable, hardworking etc. She's a favorite of the CEO named Mr. No which makes her the envy of other trainees in the company. They tease her for being a foreigner, particularly one other top trainee named Chu Mina who is the wealthy daughter of a close friend of Mr. No's. She is the main antagonist of the story. She is extremely cruel, going as far as drugging Rachel at a party so she is hung over during her evaluation the next day and even sending Rachel's mother footage of her daughter dancing in a daze at the party. We also see that Mina struggles with her father's approval as he constantly verbally berates her. And, of course, the final main character is Jason, an extremely popular idol under the company's biggest boy group. He is goofy and charming, but also cocky and impulsive. Jason and Rachel seem to be uncontrollably drawn to each other and whenever they sing together, it sounds perfect. In the story, Rachel is able to get exposure by going viral while singing karaoke with Jason and makes her way into a song he was originally going to sing with Mina, making it a trio. She begins to date Jason in secret despite the warnings of famous idol Kong Gina who gets dumped by her secret famous boyfriend after DB kicks her out for dating him. She breaks down in a restaurant Rachel is in, furious at the company she gave her life to for dropping her like she was nothing. The trio go to Toronto to promote their song at a special concert where Mina and Rachel begin to bond over the shared experience of high expectations and sexism in the industry. However, after Jason forgets all their stage clothes at the hotel, Rachel gives Mina her only spare outfit which includes heels that break during the performance. Mina is taken to the hospital for her ankle, taking her out of their next promotion in New York. Mina believes Rachel set her up on purpose and gets her dad to offer Rachel's father a job to gain complete control over her. Shortly after, news comes out that Jason is caught in a love triangle between Mina and Rachel, painting him as the victim of two ruthless trainees. It is revealed that there were cameras purposefully following Jason and Rachel on their dates even when they hung out with her sister in Japan. They also set up dates with Jason and Mina. However, Jason was in a real relationship with Rachel while him and Mina were just acting. The news works against all three, hurting the reputation of the girls and tainting the message of Jason's new solo song which was originally about the conflict of being half Canadian and half Korean but now sounds like he's singing about being stuck between the two girls. Feeling used, Rachel breaks up with Jason but he doesn't stop her, reminding her that she also used footage of him without his knowledge in the karaoke video of them singing together. Despite harming their reputations, DB still debuts Rachel and Mina in a nine-member girl group called Girls Forever. Although none of the girls are her friends, and some even her enemies, Rachel is happy to debut. Mina privately reveals she has footage of Jason and Rachel kissing that she could use to prove they were actually dating and not just acting which could get her kicked from the group. 
Rachel later destroys Mina's phone in anger, it is unclear if this removes the video or not. The story ends with her basking under the spotlight, being the first to step forwards in her new group where she is constantly bullied, still happy to finally get the chance to live her dreams. I enjoyed the book overall. I think it really felt like thoughts Jessica would have in that situation and I could feel her touch in the writing. Maybe like a really well-written self-insert fanfiction. I think some of the dialogue was a bit forced as well as some of the plot points but it is a young adult romance so I'm not surprised. I do think it could have gone deeper into what it's like to be a trainee. Or maybe the world has just gotten so good at speculating that nothing really sounds new. It seems like something that someone who wasn't in the industry could virtually write to. In fact, some things I even thought sounded too outlandish to be true. As if a K-pop fan was just speculating this kind of stuff happened. I feel like I used to be in K-pop roleplay Tumblr groups that weren't much different plot-wise. But clearly it must be something that happens if Jessica wrote it. Maybe we just have a better grasp on the reality of it than we thought. There are beautiful scenes and experiences painted throughout the book. Jessica describes some really cool outfits, food, and locations throughout. I really enjoyed that. The characters are good overall. There's a good variety of them. They've got their own characteristics and struggles but still feel a bit too one-dimensional to me as these struggles are very tangible and laid out rather early for the most part. I think it could have opened up the vulnerabilities of other characters a bit more, even Rachel's, as her struggles didn't seem much different from any other trainees. She was anxious, tired, always expected to do well. Rachel's main flaw is simply that she avoids direct confrontation including camera attention. While she amended the pressures of her family and became less camera shy, she doesn't really develop a lot or realize her own mistakes. She simply needed to be tougher. Maybe that was the point though. That the industry is just about being ambitious, not soft, and people don't really address their shortcomings. I do still wish they touched more on the fact she really was spoiled by the company due to her closeness with the CEO and one of the trainers. They seemed to bash Mina for her closeness with Mr. Han and her connections with her father although Rachel wasn't truly much different. Jason was a good character originally seeming like the dream guy then revealing he was reckless and oblivious. He annoyingly puts Rachel in difficult positions with little concern about the consequences it could have for her. I did like that he was originally not aware of the sexism in the industry because I'm sure many male idols are. But honestly Jason almost causes more trouble for Rachel than Mina does. He also has the conflict of having a white father who often tried to assimilate him and his Korean mother into the Canadian life not even supporting him as a famous idol after his mother died. I feel his conflict was one of the best. Mina's was as well but I wish we saw it develop just a bit more. In the end, she didn't seem to change at all. Then again, maybe that's like real life. I like that the book talked about the sexism in the industry. I like that Jason is shown as part of this problem not processing the comments on their trio slut shaming Mina and Rachel but talking about how sexy he is was blatant sexism. Kong Gina also expresses how there's a huge double standard in the industry for women versus men. I also liked that the book left many things unresolved. It felt realistic in that sense. Despite building to a grand success, things aren't perfect. Rachel doesn't get the guy. She doesn't befriend the bully. She doesn't keep her best friend. Her dad doesn't gain true financial security in Korea. She doesn't rebuild her reputation. It isn't some big triumphant win in the end. She finally debuts but she's still trapped in the company, owing the execs, Mina, and Jason everything. They could all tank her career at any moment if they wanted to. I believe this shows just how much people are willing to give up. Rachel seems like she'll be immune or go through it all in an earnest way but she still uses other people, she still puts up with the abuse of the industry, and she has no prominent control over her life. She's really given up everything for the spotlight. I was actually hoping they would lean into it even more. Where Rachel starts to become what she hates a bit more, only to realize everyone is like that to a degree and lose herself to it. But, in other ways, 
I do like how subtle it is. We applaud Rachel for carving her own path and are so proud of her finally debuting that we almost forget she's now on thinner ice than ever. Yet she's happy in the end, despite losing almost everything and gaining nothing but a debut, she is finally able to shine. I believe Jessica plants herself mostly in Rachel and Gina. Rachel would be much like her in the early years under SM, ambitious but unsure. Gina would be her after, scorned by the company she worked so hard for. I don't believe any of the other characters would directly be any idols in SM. I would hope no one in Girls' Generation was quite like Mina, particularly the part where she drugs Rachel as that's just next level terrible. I saw lots of people saying it was Taehyun, it definitely isn't. She seems mostly inspired by mean girls from movies with a trainee twist than anyone in Jessica's actual life. However, I don't doubt that idols aren't as close as they seem and that friend groups with form and some members will be a lot nicer to certain people and not to others. As much as it is inevitable that shoving a bunch of teens together will result in some deep friendships, the likelihood that everyone gets along is low. Anyways, it's definitely not her direct life story and I'd guess that elements of other people and their experiences were scattered throughout the story. I enjoyed Shine and would recommend it. It's got a unique vibe and is fairly well written. It feels like a prologue to something bigger and rightfully so. I wish there was more so I could continue to see Rachel and the rest of girls forever grow and change. <laughs>